Hi, my name is Steven and welcome back to my channel. And today I'm going to be talking about lifestyle inflation, thoughts from an extreme cheapskate. From the perspective of a cheapskate, lifestyle inflation is to be religiously avoided. The very essence of being a cheapskate means that we avoid what's called lifestyle creep or the ability to grow your lifestyle based on the income that you're making. Being a cheapskate means that you keep an eye on your expenses and value frugality, and really resisting all types of temptations that might come to you once you get a bigger salary. We as a cheapskate, once we do get that larger salary, we'll try to invest more of it or save it rather than spending it. We want to at all times avoid unnecessary spending whenever we can on new things and really resist against our consumerist culture to buy everything once we have the ability to do so. For my own life, my parents imparted the wisdom of frugality to me, and that lesson has helped me to steer clear of lifestyle inflation whenever I got the chance to increase my income. And it has become the cornerstone to my philosophy of money. Even though it's hard to maintain and there's temptation everywhere, I must do what I can to safeguard my financial assets. And I maintain a vigilant eye on my expenses whenever I can, however long I can. And I have these check-ins with myself to make sure that I'm on the right track and I'm not spending lavishly. But this kind of philosophy was hard to implement and maintain, so I'll share with you my thoughts on lifestyle inflation. And hopefully it can help guide you to avoid lifestyle creep. So in today's video, I'm going to talk about my background, my thoughts on lifestyle inflation, and my general thoughts. And before we start, be sure to like, subscribe, comment, share with friends, hit that notification bell if you like this content. And here we go. Lifestyle inflation is basically the tendency of oneself to increase their spending whenever they get more income. As people's financial situation improves, there is a tendency to want the things that they couldn't have before. And they allow their expenses to escalate in tandem with that increased salary. This phenomenon can lead to an increased standard of living and additional expenses annually. This increase in standard of living isn't necessarily a bad thing, but if done regularly, it can impact you negatively in the long term. This means that you purchase larger and more expensive things and you'll have to maintain that salary in order for you to keep it. Or if you can't pay it, then you go into debt servicing them. And if you don't watch it, it can strain your finances and your retirement funds in the future. Recently, I've been thinking about lifestyle inflation more than usual. This was brought about by having a new child into this world. I had to take a good hard look about what I actually need versus what I really wanted. Thinking about all the space and financial impacts of a child resulted in me thinking about lifestyle inflation. And because I got a new job, the opportunity was there for me to increase my lifestyle. Once the cheapskate in me got a hold of myself, I thought about ways to optimize my space instead of buying a bigger one. And this got me thinking about lifestyle inflation overall and how pervasive it can be to the culture. We naturally think as our income increases, we just buy bigger and better things in our lives. It's very hard for us to stop, slow down, and think about how to optimize what we have versus buying something new. And it's harder and harder to do so in this culture because we're thrown advertisements for new things all the time. This can cause us to spiral into debt and maintain an unsustainable lifestyle. So I wanted to take some time to explore my thoughts on lifestyle inflation. So here are my thoughts on lifestyle inflation. Number one, it happens to everyone. Lifestyle inflation is a common phenomenon that can happen to anyone throughout their lives. And it affects individuals of all walks of life. As people grow up, age, and progress in their careers, they'll naturally get more money. And the increase in income will naturally draw them to buying better things and elevate their standard of living wherever they were at. Because the desire to have improved comfort, conveniences, and indulgences affects everyone. And even the most financially savvy folks can succumb to this lifestyle inflation. Additionally, societal expectations play another part in us wanting to inflate our lifestyles and keep evolving our standard of living with our peers. I once thought that I could avoid lifestyle inflation coming from a cheapskate background. But in reality, the urge to spend money on comfort and conveniences dwarfed my thrifty habits. In my early 20s, I try to adhere to the cheapskate lifestyle, but I can't do the same things in my 30s now. Eating unhealthy foods and cutting corners financially doesn't work for me anymore. I look for more quality products that I could use for the long term, and that requires an upfront investment. And now some of these quality products also save me time as well, buying it once versus buying it multiple times. As I got older, I was just less tolerant to eating crappy foods and using low quality products. And the more expensive stuff just improved the quality of life I had. So I started to buy more stuff as I made more money. But I at least spent a lot of time thinking about what made the most sense for me to go buy. I didn't randomly buy things I wanted. So I think even as an extreme cheapskate, lifestyle inflation can impact anyone. 
it's mostly unavoidable due to the fact of human nature. At the end of the day, you can try to mitigate this with more thoughtful spending. Number two, harder reverse. Reversing lifestyle inflation can pose a considerable challenge to each one of us. Once we have those ingrained habits and expectations, it's really hard to go back to an older way of life. Because once we upgraded our standard of living, if we're not continuously exposed to challenges, we'll default to the most comfortable thing we're used to. And it can pose a real psychological barrier for us to go back to a low quality product. Things like a nicer car and a nicer house is hard to let go once you had a taste of it. But these things can be a significant financial burden on our lifestyles. And it's hard for us to go back to something simpler without really deliberately doing it. We're not gonna just wake up one day and say that we're gonna go back to the life we lived when we're younger. Moreover, going to something simpler might have societal and pure expectation challenges as well. People might judge you for downgrading your lifestyle even when everyone else is moving ahead. Once you start down the path of lifestyle inflation, it's really hard to get that back. When I started to spend money on quality food, it was really hard for me to go back to the cheap stuff. For example, most of my life, I've used pre-grated Parmesan cheese. Now that I've tasted the real stuff from a block and grated my own cheese, I can't go back to Parmesan cheese pre-grated. It's a lot of these little things that creep up the cost of your life. And also when you buy that expensive quality product and you use it for multiple times, you fall in love with it. It's hard to go back to the low quality item. So in order for you to revert back your lifestyle inflation, you have to deliberately do it and just accept that the experience is going to be a challenge for you to get used to again. So once you inflate your lifestyle, it's really hard for you to go back. The key is to not do it in the first place if you can help it. Number three, mindfulness spending is key. Spending mindfully is a great way to mitigate lifestyle inflation. We want to foster a conscious and intentional approach to how we spend our money. That means regularly assessing what we want and what we need in life. Even when you get an increase in salary, assess whether or not the thing that you're trying to buy is really needed. Going through this exercise can also help you to identify places where you're spending too much and can help give you an understanding of your consumption patterns. Mindfulness spending is really giving you the idea of assessing the long-term impacts of whatever you're buying and help encourage long-term financial goals rather than immediate gratification. It can help mitigate the worst aspects of societal pressure to spend with our peers and ultimately contribute to a more balanced and sustainable financial lifestyle. The worst spending spree in my life came about because I wasn't thinking the pros and cons of my financial lifestyle inflation. It was a decision made out of pure convenience and indulgence. In 2013, one year into my first job, I spent over 4K on a Hawaiian vacation. It was a solo trip six nights in Oahu. I spent $1,600 in hotel costs alone, and the rest of it was on flights, rental cars, and food. $4,000 at the time was a substantial portion of my yearly take-home income. And it was one of those things that I just didn't practice mindfulness spending. I wanted to increase my lifestyle commiserate with my first job. That one trip put into perspective that even though I had a job, I couldn't fund lavish trips even if I wanted to because there is no way I could sustain that for the long term. Nowadays, my trips have all been under $3,000 with me and my wife, and we're aiming to keep our international trips in the lower thousands. We start thinking really deliberately on what we want to spend our travel expenses on. Do we need it or do we want it? So one of the ways that extreme cheapskates can get a control on lifestyle inflation is to mindfully think about what we spend our money on. Number four, inflation without the cost. There is a path in which we can inflate our lifestyles doing minimal damage to our financial situation. And we can do this by focusing on meaningful upgrades in our lives. This means that we can change up our habits and our routine or assess the return on investment of buying a low quality product multiple times or one high quality product. Because sometimes when we inflate our lifestyle and buy that quality item, it can have more uses than the low quality stuff. This means that in the long term, that high quality product could ultimately be cheaper. And good habits such as buying high quality food and cooking at home might be a lot cheaper than ordering out all the time. Several lifestyle upgrades might not increase your cost at all. It might be a net zero or even reduce your cost. But we do need to take time and figure out what works for us and how to find that return on investment. For example, early on, I ate out a lot once I had my first job. Every two or three meals, I would have McDonald's because that was my favorite meal at the time. But as I got older, I just got sick of McDonald's and I wanted to try new things with my cooking skills. But naturally, as I got better with cooking, I used higher and higher quality ingredients. And that overall improved my health and hit to my wallet. Or the other aspect was I bought a one-time high quality product and I've used it for years. This means that I didn't need to replace multiple lower quality items. 
There are various unique ways anyone can improve their lifestyle without increasing the cost. The key is to get creative and think of different solutions that might fit the bill for you. At the end of the day, there are options to inflate your lifestyle without hitting your cost. My goal as an extreme cheapskate is to figure out how to get creative and work with what I got. So here are my general thoughts on lifestyle inflation. I think that most people use money as a crutch too much in life, and they spend money on pure convenience without thinking of a novel solution that doesn't require any money. And people lean on buying their way out of struggle rather than going through it and doing the hard challenges. When really all it takes is some creativity and the willingness to do some work to get through it. I do think we like to pay for convenience and throw money at the problems that we don't really want to solve ourselves. When we peel back the idea that money can fix everything, we open up a whole new brand of options available to us. The most difficult aspect is to get people on board that there are other options that exist in this universe. And that money, despite the contrary, doesn't solve all of our problems. It's definitely something to think about when we have lifestyle inflation is how can we be more resourceful in life? Lastly, lifestyle inflation is very much exacerbated by the media and the constant comparisons on social media with other people that have more than us. If we never see what we're missing out on, we never have the urge to buy that thing or compare with others of what we don't have. We would never want an alternative lifestyle that's much more expensive than our current lifestyles. So one way to fight lifestyle inflation is to avoid social media at all costs. It's one of the ways we can take back some control so we're not inundated with all the things that we feel like we want to buy and ultimately not be influenced by others to go into debt. So those are my thoughts on lifestyle inflation as an extreme cheapskate. Lifestyle creep or inflation will happen to everyone at some point in their lives. And it comes about because as we age, our standard of living will increase and our comfort levels will change as we are more sure of what we want in life. And you have more resources at your disposal to increase your standard of living. The need to social proof ourselves pushes us at times to inflate our lifestyles past what we can afford. But in most cases, it's not in our best interest financially to go through with that inflation. In my life, I grew up with frugal parents and I learned the value of frugality. And it certainly helped me to mitigate the worst aspects of lifestyle inflation. But even though I had that background, it was still hard for me to contain lifestyle inflation as I got my first job. But building on that lesson learned, I have to be more mindful about my spending in the future as I gain more financial assets. I know it's a constant battle against lifestyle inflation, but ultimately there are ways around it to reduce the cost of it. So I hope you took some ideas from my thoughts on lifestyle inflation as an extreme cheapskate. And maybe you'll bring some of those lessons into your own life. So thank you for watching. Please leave a comment down below on what are your thoughts on lifestyle inflation and what was one thing that you did to increase your lifestyle. And I'll see you next time.